Hi, my name is Charles Crawford, and in this video I want to go over a few key indicators for predicting macroeconomic events, such as the real estate crash of 2008. And with this knowledge that I'll be giving you, you'll be able to see trends and predict things that you wouldn't normally be able to see from a bottom-up perspective. So let's get started. So one of the main indicators is the Housing Affordability Index, which you can see here. So in 05 and 06, as you can tell, real estate was booming. And while prices were going incredibly higher than they should have, the Housing Affordability Index fell to about 100, which was a 14-year low, which basically means that it was the lowest affordability in 14 years. People could not afford the home prices, which basically means if people can't afford home prices, they're too high and they're going to correct, which, as you can see, happened here. And then, you know, wait, up till now, 2012, the housing, housing affordability index has risen up to 200, which basically means housing is twice as affordable now as it was in 2006, which is about true, especially in big crash zones like Arizona. You can get houses half off easy. So that's one key indicator is the Housing Affordability Index. The next key indicator I want to talk about is Mortgage Applications Index. So when you look at mortgage applications, that kind of shows trends too because if a lot of people aren't getting mortgage applications, that should tell you something. And as you can see, it peaked in 06 for mortgage applications and then it started falling um, and then it was a little stagnant. Well, it technically peaked in 05, end of 05, being of 06, and then mortgage applications dropped considerably um, in 2008, and then crashed hard for the next three years. So, but basically, there was like a good year here where you could see that mortgage applications fell a lot, and then we we're kind of stagnant for another year. So that should uh, should indicate that mortgage applications would fall because if housing is not affordable for the average person, then mortgage rates should fall, which means that real estate prices should fall because it's all supply and demand. And that leads right next to the next key indicator, which is the inventory to sales ratio for new and existing homes. Okay, so now let's get into some more key indicators. and demographics. So, this is really interesting. 1946 to 1964 was the baby boom generation. Now, 1965 to 1969, the birth rate fell by 14% compared to the 1960 to 1964 time period. So, because the baby boomers were done booming, the birth rate fell 14%. So what does this mean? Real estate crash. Now, the average first-time home buyer is 25 to 30 years, 30 years old. So that means if you add 25 to 1965, which is the first year after the boom when the birth rate fell 14%, that means that in 1990, there should be a real estate crash. And guess what? There was. So if you would have looked at the trends and realized in, let's say, 1989, that next year, in 1990, that there would be a 14% decrease in the birth, or a 14% decrease in first-time home buyers. you should know that real estate would crash because there would be less demand for home buying. And in fact, there was. So that's a really interesting trend to consider, 
is how many people are being born and when you're considering your investments will there be a boom in population and demographics so something to consider another key indicator is the library rate now what does this you know indicate well for example the library rate usually tracks the federal funds rate really close now when it moved higher in 2007 significantly that signaled growing distrust about the health of the financial system because when they when LIBOR increases their rates for lending, their interest rates, that shows that they're cautious and charging more for loans. But that also flags the potential for problems in the economy because many many debtors have debts tied to LIBOR. So it's just a simple example of if you're looking at the LIBOR chart for the interest rate compared to the federal funds rate, when there's a huge gap or difference in yield spreads, that's bad because that means that there's distrust in the financial markets. Which means that there should be some type of problems coming in the future. Next, another indicator I want to point out is the unemployment rate. Now, when the unemployment rate increases 0.6 of a percent, Nine months later, there will be a recession. And that has happened every time since World War II. Whenever the interest or whenever the uh, unemployment rates suddenly jump 0.6 of a percent, there has been a recession in the average time of about nine months. So that, that's another trend is that if all of a sudden unemployment starts rising unexpectedly, be wary of a future recession coming. Sure, there will be jumps. A 0.6% is pretty significant. So those are just a few key indicators that I would consider before making investments. Charles Crawford here, and thank you for watching.